Hi, I'm Raj. If you haven't been to my channel, it's great to see you here. The internet is going nuts with the advent of AI software engineer called Devon. Devon is an autonomous AI agent that can write code, build web apps, fix bugs, and apparently train other AI models, and seemingly can do most of the activities that a software engineer does. Devon also has access to four different tools. The main tool that understands a task and breaks it down is called Planner. Then we have a terminal and a code editor and a browser with internet access. With all these four tools, it looks like Devon might steal your job. But you should understand that Devon was made by software engineers like you. And it belongs to a class of AI technologies called autonomous AI agents. If you understand how autonomous AI agents work, then you can pretty much make sense of how Devon works. And also you can build tools like Devon. Who is this content for? If you're deep inside the AI space and are already building the autonomous AI agents on your own, then this content may not be for you. But if you're already working with ChatGPT APIs and other LLMs and want to get into building autonomous AI agents, then this is a great start for you. With that being said, let's break this content down into subsections. First, we're going to talk about the difference between an LLM and an agent. Then we're going to talk about prompt engineering techniques that paved way for the agentic behavior. Then we're going to talk about timeline of open source autonomous AI agents. Then we will take a look into the architecture behind the standalone autonomous AI agent. And then finally, we will take a look into multi-agent framework architectures. Another side note before we go further, if you are a TypeScript dev, then you should probably learn to work with Python because all the latest frameworks and libraries in the AI are being built on top of Python. So don't be scared of Python. Just learn to work with it and it's a really easy language. An LLM is a simple next token predictor. When you give an input token, it predicts the next probable token. An AI agent is just an LLM with a task planner, memory of past actions, and some external tools in an environment. Its goal is to complete all the tasks on the list by performing relevant actions. Tools like ChatGPT already can do simple tasks by means of function calling. It's important to know that an AI agent is only as useful as the tools and the resources at its disposal. The heart of an AI agent is a large language model. The first step towards making the LLMs act like an agent is to make it reason. And you can make an LLM reason by few prompting techniques. The first prompting technique is called chain of thought prompting or COT prompting. In COT, you make the LLM go through a path of reasoning that contains multiple steps before arriving at an answer. A simple let's think step by step statement in the prompt seems to have drastically improved the reasoning capabilities of an LLM. Then we have self-consistency coupled with COT, where instead of having one reasoning path, we give the LLMs multiple reasoning paths to arrive at an answer. Then we have a more advanced prompting technique called tree of thought prompting, where we let LLMs branch out into a tree-like structure and let the LLM find its own way towards the most reasonable path. It's just like how humans solve a problem. We solve it in one way, and if we know that it cannot be done, then we abandon it and learn from it and try to figure out another way. Now, these are the prompting techniques that help with reasoning, but in case of autonomous AI agents, they should not only reason, but also act based on the reasoning. That brings us to another technique that enables both reasoning and action, and it's called React. React technique prompts LLMs to generate verbal reasoning and actions for a task. The actions sometimes involve interaction with external tools. Imagine you have a basic prompt to know the capital of France. But if your LLM is not trained on this data, it could answer you wrong. In case of React prompting, we ask the LLM to write down what it's thinking and the actions it should take and observe the output and arrive at an answer. And this React prompting forms the framework for building standalone autonomous AI agents. If you take a look at the AI agent space, there are a lot of tools in the market that you can learn and work with. Last year, around the month of March, the first autonomous AI agent was released. And since then, a lot of open source and closed source AI agents have come to the market. The first few agents were standalone autonomous AI agents, meaning 
you typically had a single agent recursively doing work. Then a few months later, we had the rise of multi-agent frameworks like Autogen and Crew AI, where we have multiple agents working together to solve a problem. These multi-agent frameworks are getting increasingly common and might be the future of how we build smart autonomous machines. For someone who would like to get started with building autonomous AI agents, you might feel a bit lost because you have so many tools to learn. I believe that if you're starting now, you don't really have to learn all the tools, but you just have to understand the both ends of the spectrum. So it's like where we started and where we are right now. So in the next step, that's what we're going to do. We will take a look at the architectures of both AutoGPT, a standalone autonomous AI agent, and Crew AI, a multi-agent framework. AutoGPT was one of the first open source autonomous AI agents, and the architecture is built on top of React prompting. A person named George Song took the pain of going through the code base of AutoGPT to understand the architecture and wrote a nice article about it. The architecture is slightly technical and a bit hard to understand, but don't worry, I'm going to try and simplify the architecture for you to understand it better. In case of AutoGPT, they have an elaborate system prompt that defines the persona, plus it also defines these six entities. The first one is the goals or the tasks it needs to achieve. The next one is the constraints of what it can do and what it can't do. And then all the resources in the environment it has access to, like web browser and terminal. And then the commands it can execute on the environment then evaluation strategies that it needs to apply in order to correct past mistakes and the LLM output format that's based on the React prompting. Now that's clear, let's go to the actual architecture. The first thing you can see is that we have the input from the user that contains the system prompts and one extra input to determine the next command to run. Once this input is passed into the LLM, it generates the output in the React format. And based on the React output, it also determines the next command to execute. If the next command is, let's say, web search, then it will go ahead and do it and get an output. The recent React output and the command execution output is stored as text in a short-term memory and also made into an embedding at the same time and stored in the long-term memory for later retrieval. This memory retrieval logic seems to have changed over time for AutoGPT, but in a nutshell, the goal of the memory is to recollect the past events and add it as part of the next input cycle. In the next cycle, it would try to correct the past mistakes and go on to execute the next task until it reaches the command where it says it's done. Some AI nerds call this loop the dev loop. The job of each loop is to understand what's happened so far and also come up with the next command to run. And that's practically it. After AutoGPT, some other autonomous AI agents also enter the market with slightly updated architecture, like baby AGI, but it didn't really perform any better than AutoGPT. The next natural progression from the standalone autonomous AI agents architecture was multi-agent architectures. And it's also inspired by tree of thought prompting. If you go to the promptingguide.ai's documentation section of TOT, you can see that we have a three experts prompt where you ask three experts to talk to each other and come up with an answer. And if you run this prompt, you can see that they arrive at a solution after discussing with each other. Multiple agents are required when a task becomes too complicated for a single agent. One of the core features in multi-agent architecture is delegation meaning the agents assign tasks or delegate the task to other agents that are more suitable to solve this problem when they think they cannot. And this ability to communicate with other agents and ask for help for solving certain tasks enables this architecture to solve more complex problems. A great example of multi-agent architecture is Crew AI, where you have multiple agents working together to solve a set of tasks. Crew AI has two different process architectures. The first one is the sequential process architecture, and the next one is the hierarchical process architecture. In a sequential process, all the agents are tied to a certain task. The first agent completes the task and signals completion. The next agent picks up the output of the first agent and starts working on it. 
And this goes on until the last task. Imagine you have a game builder crew where you have three agents, developer, tester, and chief QA, who approves the game, and the chief QA also has the ability to delegate. And tasks being develop, review, and approve. The first task is for the developer to build the game and signal completion. Then based on this output, the next agent kicks in in order to take over the next task. And then once the testing is done, the chief QA takes over for approval. If the chief QA feels that the job has not been done properly, it will delegate the task either to developer or tester back and forth until it feels that the job is done. The next and a bit more advanced architecture is the hierarchical process architecture, where you have a supervisor that's responsible for assigning tasks to agents. In order to enable the supervisor, you just have to pass another LLM config called manager underscore LLM and set the process to be hierarchical. For instance, in our game builder crew, the manager or the supervisor agent would oversee the workflow and would be responsible for assigning or delegating the task to the developer, tester, and the chief QA agents. And the manager agent would also ensure that the tasks are handled in right order and the outcomes meet the required standards. One thing you have to remember is that individual agents can still delegate works to other agents if delegation is enabled. But if it gets too messy, you can turn off the delegation for individual agents and let the manager take care of all the delegation for you. Multi-agent architectures are still fairly new, so I'm sure you will hit a lot of roadblocks and infinite delegation loops. But as we go into the future, you can expect things to get a lot better. If you were to start building something right now, I would either use Crew AI or Autogen. I personally find Crew AI to be a bit more easier to learn. This whole AI agent-based architectures are really new, so I wouldn't really expect to build something stable and prod ready. But as you've seen in the case of Devon, more and more players are building autonomous AI agents and the open source is also moving a bit faster. So for you, I think it's a great time to start looking into autonomous AI agents.